All right, guys, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> we started gas laws before we went on break, and now that we're off for quite a while, um, I can't really make the videos the way I usually do, so I'm trying something a little bit new. Um, I'm up down here in the corner. Hopefully you don't mind, because it's driving me crazy right now. But um, hopefully everybody's well, and I apologize if there's any loud barking or anything. My dogs are here and all that other good stuff. Okay, but let's get started. So, uh, gotta figure out how to work this again. All right, so after you get done with this video, hopefully you'll be able to do these things. Oh, by the way, I am gonna put a nose page on Schoology that you can download and print off. Um, I bought this from Teachers Pay Teachers. Of course, it's got a copyright at the bottom, this PowerPoint and everything, so I'm just gonna use this uh, to kind of save some time. Okay, so. We are going to review a little bit of KMT. We did this before we left. Uh, KMT makes three major assumptions that, first off, that all particles move in a straight line until they collide, which is kind of like Newton's first law. The motions of particles are constant and random, and they are there are no attractive or repulsive forces among the particles. They don't try to repel each other or attract each other. They just kind of go their own way. All right, the four variables we talked about and that are on your foldable that we did before we left were the pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. Now, in your, on yours, I'm going to try to see if this works. On your foldable, we have kilopascals right here. We have millimeters of mercury, and we have ATM. My pen is not working right. But we also talked about PSI and TOR. Ooh, this thing is really weird. Okay, T O R R. Sorry, um, that I got to figure this thing out before the next video. Okay, so um, volume can be in any kind of liters, deciliters, centiliters, that kind of stuff. All of our temperatures need to be in kelvins. So you do 273 <clears throat> to all, add 273 to all your temp temperatures in Celsius to get kelvins. And moles, of course, you can do grams to moles and moles to grams. All right, some factors that affect gas pressure is adding and removing gases. So when the amount of gas is increased, the pressure will increase. So doubling the amount of gas in there is definitely going to double the amount of pressure. Some other things, um, the more particles there are means there's going to be more collisions, which means more pressure because collisions make pressure. And this is a direct relationship. So if, if particles double, pressure doubles. And how is this? Uh, real world application of this well the strength and flexibility of a raft are important when you go whitewater rafting I've done this in, my, in the past um, in Colorado a couple of years ago and it was so much fun highly recommend it think about it though the raft must be able to withstand the pressure of the air inside and the forces of the rapids below so if it's too inflated if it has too much gas we're gonna burst if it has not enough it's going to sink because the rapids will take over all right, another factor is volume. Um, when the volume of a gas uh, is decreased, the amount of pressure is increased. We kind of saw this when we taught, when we did the plunger, uh, the syringe. Okay, decreasing the volume by half decreases, or increases the pressure by twice as much. So we take some of the volume out, we're gonna have more collisions because uh, gases won't have as many places to go. So particles are closer together in the container, which means more collisions and really means more pressure. This is the indirect relationship. So this is where Boyle's Law, where we talked about, which we're going to talk about again. If the pressure is half, I mean, if the volume is half, the pressure is doubled and vice versa. So like a soda can, when you're opening a soda can, the reason why you fizz and you spill over is because there is so much pressure inside the can that when you pop it open, you're the the pressure is released there's more uh, less I mean there's more um, <clears throat> more places for the gas to go so its volume increases the pressure decreases okay shaking a carbonated beverage causes the bubbles to mix with the soda we'll talk about that when we get into solutions okay so factors that affect another factor that affects it is temperature and we've already know that if you're gonna heat something up it moves faster moving faster means more collisions so if you double the temperature, you double the pressure. So 
they're going to strike the walls of the container and build up pressure. So we just kind of talked about this. This is a, a real world application is aerosol cans. You don't want to put a sealed container um, under a lot of pressure and heat because what happens is you are going to explode. So you also don't want to put an empty can in there because even though it's empty, there's still enough gas in there and it's going to build up pressure. It's going to um, explode and you don't want to freeze it either because it can cause holes in it and puncture it. And that's why the aerosol can say do not store above 120 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop this video here because this is a little review. Um, hopefully you guys are doing well and I will be having some other stuff out on Schoology for you guys to work on in case we are out of school for longer than we anticipate. Okay. I'll see you guys in class hopefully soon.